Mary Meatall. Finally getting around to recording um, an update on my first hexagon granny square. Well it's really not a granny square is it? It's a granny hex <laughs> coat um, with the hood aspect and then the, the third part is basically the finishes and edging. Um, but before I do see look I'm pairing off garn colours for projects coming along. Hello! <laughs> um, so, oh honey, she's hitting at the camera. I know, Bobby. They don't like the camera. I don't like the camera either, honey. No. Um, so, usually I vacuum in the morning after, I, you know, the ducks go outside. Um, just to pick up any hay that's, you know, fallen on the floor from... Hello, honey! That's fallen on the floor from taking them outside for the day. Um, but as you can see, Sigrid, she's, uh, she's mother hen at the moment. Hey, honey! Siki, siki, siki! <laughs> she's gone full brood. Broody. So, um, she's staying inside during the day with me now. <laughs> However... Um, about two times a day or once a day when she's broody she will jump off her nest to go cavort and um, uh, be a dragon and scream at everybody like a, a crazy pregnant lady even though ducks don't get pregnant as such but you know what I mean same sort of uh, hoo-ha hormones all over her and um, <laughs> scare everyone so the ducks go I don't know, the, the, duck, the, the boys chaperone her, but the girls are like, oh, well, she's, she's nuts, you know. <laughs> um, Mama duck crazy. Uh, so she goes and does that and uh, jumps in the pool and has goes back to her rock-eating ways. She likes to eat rock Sigrid. Um, and then she'll go back to her nest. So what I'm going to do is, I know, diverting from the hood. Um, what I'm going to do is, what are we on? Be closer to mid afternoon, I'm going to take her outside for you know just five or ten minutes. So then I've got a chance to clean out the the bedding, which I clean every morning when I take them outside. Um, so it's clean, fresh hay when they go to bed at night after their bath. So I'll be taking her outside and then do a quick clean up, quick vac, and she would have gone to a spot where she thinks she can nest. I'll go and grab her and she'll protest and uh, <laughs> but I'll bring her back in here with the the clean bedding but I won't touch her nest I'll keep that intact in there and I think we'll do that for as long as she's broody um do I want ch uh, ducklings right now no <laughs> but she's broody and she, you know yeah oh, just I don't know I tend to like my animals to be happy and if I've got something in their system they need to get out, you know, then, you know, I just have to lump it as a pet owner. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. But I just love that little whimpering that she does. Um, she doesn't bite or any, well, she doesn't bite me or anything like that. She just likes to make that little warning sound. Anyway, so back to the hood. Okay, so... With part one, um, I touched over the the hexagon granny coat. It's so heavy because of this gun I've used. Um, if you want a lighter coat, you could use uh, just plain DK. However, you will need to make more stitches to accommodate that. Um, and I'm going to do a lighter version, not of the exact same, of course, a bit different. Um, but that's for another day. So we got to the point where we had the, the collar done. Now I didn't want to just, what I've seen with, um, you know, granny square or clustered double crochet hoods is they just do lines going across and I, I really didn't want that. I wanted nice blocks which sort of, you know, went along with the theme of the, the pattern, block pattern or squares and the, the arm pit and jacket itself so what I did was I 
I did do a few increases in shaping but overall I did a couple of uh, lines of the navy and then I just crocheted a block of the blush then I added um, four lines of the mustard or the pumpkin on top of the blush then I actually started from outside a couple of clusters out with a cream to the center and I basically just did a single crochet around the bar to the inner part of the hood two or three times you know to get enough coverage and then I just went back across so every, with these um, rounds or rows I did actually flip my work between you know alternate rows so they're not always right side facing which I don't really mind I like that when it came to the hood so as you can see this is right side facing that's wrong side facing right side facing wrong side facing and I just keep going backwards and forwards until I got to the top of the the golden round or the mustard round or yeah mustard or what's the other word um, pumpkin pumpkin round but I didn't go across the top yet. I just went straight up to the top here in cream. I'm trying to get my bearings here. What did I? Yeah, that's what I did. Um, so I just stopped there. And then what I did was tie it off and sew to the end. So it was just like cream just to about there. I repeated the same thing on the other side, of course, outside coming in. And then once I got to the the top of this round, I then, you know, just crochet three to go up and then went across doing a row of cream. So I ended up adding one, two, three, four, five rows of cream. And then at this point, I basically had blush, mustard or pumpkin, a horseshoe of cream. And then I did the same thing with the navy in the way that I worked from outside a, 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 um, a couple of clusters out. It's amazing how red I look in here under the camera, whereas I look peachy out of the camera. Not a flattering light in this place. So I started working a couple of bars out or clusters um, into the center in the navy, just like I did with the cream. And I got to the top and stopped there. I did the same thing on the other side with the navy uh, from outside coming in. As you notice, this is separate. This is something different altogether, which I'll go into in a minute. Um, so at this point, it was just, you know, a horseshoe border, just like I did with the cream, but in the navy, up towards the top. And then I chain three to go up and then did rows across in navy, of course, going into... The, the top of the navy round and then cream and I did that for one two three four rounds or rows and then I tied off and sewed it all in now after that I turned the work inside out and then seamed together with a single stitch the tops of the two sides together to form a hood. Now I didn't like how there wasn't enough width from the back of the head to the front of the face to sit nicely. I I do like a drapey hood. <laughs> Could be because of what I am, I don't know. Um, but anyway, after doing that seam, I then did a little bit of a taper at the collar, which was sticking out a little bit. Um, towards the end of shaping the hood I actually you know um, stitched together the collar to the hood so there wasn't this sticking out but before I did that I basically with the front facing so this is not the easiest piece of work to manipulate or move around with one hand it's a quin to a blanket weight um, um, with front facing I then did one two three rows of navy going all across the front with a taper join at the beginning so I did a slip stitch single uh, stitch 
um, half double crochet, double crochet into each stitch coming up to give a taper before going into the clusters of three double crochets. Um, after that I sewed it all in then I started doing even more shaping because I wanted an effect of almost like a gathered edge and I also wanted to get rid of some of the, the height and bulk whilst maintaining width of the, the hood so I basically did another taper but this time I went straight into single stitch and then single stitch two stitches together all the way around which basically is decreasing by half and I did that with one round with the right side facing tied that off and then I did another round with the right side facing and that's where we are now now I'm really loving how the hood sits what we what we what we or I am doing now is I'm actually going to do a slip stitch border entire over the entire piece including the hood which is going to give it even more finish at the front there but I really like a shaped hood um, you know if, if I just stopped there it would be narrow very long at the top again the same sort of ick that I don't like when the the sleeves are ridiculously large in comparison to the torso hence why in part one I showed how I did a better um, arm to torso ratio in shaping the hexagon square uh, <laughs> hexagon square sounds are weird um, it's because it's not true they're hexes aren't they they're not squares but they're in lieu of the granny square they are Fargo why I think there's that reference um, so I'm going to do a slip all round. Um, oh, one thing I need to add too. Remember how I mentioned the collar was sticking out a little bit? So before I did my two final rounds in a single stitch um, in decrease, you know, one single stitch makes two stitches decrease with a single stitch stitch together. Um, I actually started from the inside of where the gap was of the two pieces, which were apart from each other so it's literally like uh, um, single stitch joining the collar up into the hood which lifted it up a little bit which is what I wanted so it basically was six stitches single stitches together of the collar up into the hood before I then progressed into doing the the single stitch around and a note on that I did a single stitch of decrease around first on the second time no 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 sorry my bad I'm just going through my memory without actually having to refer to anything um, before I did the single stitches around decrease the first and the second time or the first two or, or the two rounds of single stitch decreases on every second stitch um, I actually did the the um, seaming of the the uh, collar up into the hood at the front that was jutting out first and that is what led me so basically I did that join or seaming first and then did the first round of the single stitch one stitch and then the next single stitch two together decrease basically and then when I got to the other <coughs> excuse me I need water when I got to the other side then I did the decrease, the um, the seaming together of the collar up into the hood. Hang on a second. <coughs> I have a frog in my throat. <coughs> then I then I did that second round of single stitch decrease. So now I've got the finishing of the edge to do, which won't take long at all. I'm also doing ties, doing a belt, and there's a couple of little things I like to add to my coats which just make it a really functional piece which I'll share in part three and blessed be my part and I'm so sorry but I really need to go get water might as well keep this vlog quick anyway um, I hope you're having fun with doing your hexagon granny square <laughs> coats um, I have done a write-up with photos of the first part of this this um, series and also the second part which is the hood um, and I'll be posting up the third part final part hopefully either tomorrow 
or or uh, within the weekend and I will blog that and then I will vlog that and when I vlog that I'll also bring up a bunch of beanies that I'm making um, I just find beanies are very functional for me uh, first thing in the morning I don't have time to brush my hair <laughs> I have my hair in braids usually Dutch braids and my hair is in my face I find beanies just help keep my hair off my face um, and not whipping about when I'm trying to handle you know uh, troughs and buckets of hay and sawdust and all this sort of thing and handling animals and so I just, I just find it a lot more easier to slip over a beanie and I can't have enough beanies um, also I'm really enjoying playing with colour I love colours, uh, bright chunky colours, so I'm pretty much going to have beanies for every day of the week in different colours and combinations and choices, so I'll be sharing that little venture, uh, like I said, for my lifestyle um, in the mornings to lunchtime especially, um, and even at night, you know, um, it's just a good way of keeping very long hair. I mean, I can nearly sit on my hair at the moment, even though I just cut it. Um, it's a really good way of keeping hair out of my flipping face when I'm trying to do things. And I've got animals and, you know, making noise everywhere and stuff everywhere to do. And, you know, the routines whilst my cat is trying to trip me up. I swear it's deliberate. <laughs> um... But anyway, um, blessed be, merry part, and yeah, I hope everyone's keeping busy and sane in this crazy ass world that we're in. And I will be doing a second part of this heart bag soon. Um, and in that, by that time, I should have my my um, straps done and also the lining and I'll share what I've done with that I'll most likely pair that vlog up with beanies <laughs> Blessed be and Merry Patch